welcome back to another MS tutoring video and in this video we're going to be learning about the relationship between the circumference angle to the arc and the inner angle to the arc. When looking at almost all sectors and circumference angles to the sectors we notice that always the case is that angle B is always 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 one half of angle E right. So over here, you can see that there's a sector being formed between E, A, and C. And that is just a regular sector. But there's also a circumference angle to a sector being formed, which is B, A, and C, right? And every time that we look, we notice the same thing, that angle B is always one half of angle E. So I ask myself the question, why is this the case? And why does this always occur? Well, for that, I looked into actually why this happens and I'm making a video um, to show you guys why this is actually the case. So over here you can see that there is two triangles being formed. You have triangle B, E, and C and you have triangle B, E, and A, right? We know that triangle B, E, and C and B, E, and A are isosceles triangles because two of the sides are just the radius of the circle because um, technically this is just the center of the circle. Um, I'm gonna make it blue so it's a lot easier for you guys to identify. So the blue is the center of a circle, so we know that any point from the center of the circle to the circumference, um, which are basically all the points B, A, and C, are just the radius. So right now we can tell that side B, E, um, side E, A, and side E, C are just the radius. So we know that um, both of these triangles are isosceles. Well, where does that really get us? Well, since we know that both of these triangles are isosceles, we know that angle C over here is just angle E, right? And we also know that angle A over here is simply just angle G, right? And using the exterior angles of, um, of a triangle, we can solve for angle F in terms of angle E. So when we solve for angle F, um, we can, um, let's make the triangle outside in case. Um, so we have this triangle right here. And um, using the exterior angles of a triangle rule, um, we can solve for the exterior angle, which in this case is angle F. So when we solve for that, hold on, let me just make a better triangle. Um, when we solve for that, like just like this, um, this is the exterior angle, right? Um, as of right now, we have this angle, angle E, and we have this angle, angle E, right? Since both of these are isosceles triangles, we know that both of those angles are the same. And we can say that this is angle F because um, angle F is basically just angle E plus angle E, or, 2 times angle E. And it's the same thing for the other triangle. When we're looking at the other triangle, um, which is exactly the same thing, we notice that angle D, in this case, uh, I'm just going to forget about this triangle over here. Uh, angle D in this case, angle D is, is 2 times angle, um, angle G right? It's two times angle G. So the two things we figured out up till now is, um, is angle F is two times angle E and angle D is two times angle G. Well, where does that get us right now? Well, if you notice below, angle E, which is the angle that subtends um, the entire sector the, from the center to the sector, is basically just angle D plus angle F, right? So we, so we can say that angle E is equal to angle F plus angle D, right? And now that we have that, we know that, we know that, sorry, um, since we can sub it into two times angle E and two times angle G. So we know that angle E is now um, two times angle E plus two times angle G, right? And since both of these are two times, we can divide both sides of the equation by two, 
to simply get angle E over 2 is equal to angle E. Hold on, no, angle. Uh, I think I made a mistake here. Yes, yes. Um, it's actually, instead of angle E over here, uh, we'll actually make this angle, um, oh, let's say L. Right? Let's make this angle L. And we'll just make this back over here. And if that's angle L, we know that angle E is basically just angle L plus angle G, right? But wait a minute, angle L and angle G are basically just angle B. So now, now, now we actually know angle E is simply, angle E over two is simply just angle B, right? And now that we actually know this, that is why angle B is always one half of angle E. So there you go, um, that's the proof that actually um, this theorem does not really work because it's a fluke all the time. It, there's actually some mathematical evidence behind it. So that's the end of the video, guys. Um, I hope you learned something new. Um, if you have any comments or concerns, please feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Other than that, thanks for watching, guys.